If you need to pass the GED, know that avoiding these mistakes is going to help you move ahead to bigger and better things faster like college or a better job. One big mistake is ignoring letters when you see them in math problems. Some students would see something like 10a plus 2a and think that this equals 12 and they'd essentially forget to bring that a along for the ride so this should really be 12a. Another example would be to get a question like this 2a plus 2 and think that this equals 12 when really you can't add 10a plus 2. If one number has a variable and the other doesn't, you can't add them. Tommy, now's your chance. What are your best tips for math? All right, I don't think this is going anywhere. I'm gonna have to bring a real guest in. Hello friends, I'm Michelle from Purely Persistent and Parker and I have collaborated on this video and a science video over on my channel. So make sure that you check that video out as well. So the order of operations is something that people actually often get wrong even though there's a nice acronym. So people remember it as PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So the P is parentheses followed by exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. But there's a little caveat. So the first thing you're always going to do is the parentheses and then followed by the exponents. But multiplication and division are buddies. So you're going to do whatever is right, no, left, and then move your way to the right. And the same with addition and subtraction. They're buddies, you do whichever one comes first. And by knowing that, you'll definitely eliminate a lot of errors. And Parker and I both have videos following this concept, so make sure you check them out. Next is the formula sheet. So really make sure that you know how to read the formula sheet because a lot of times people don't really study the formula sheet, but this is like your cheat sheet. This is your guide so that you don't have to memorize all of the equations. Now do make sure that you know which ones you need to memorize and which ones you don't. For instance, high set students need to memorize the quadratic equation. And my final tip is what is the question asking? Just the other day, I was doing a math problem with some students and I found myself finding an answer, which was on there, but I actually went a step further to find that answer instead of going back and finding the answer that it actually was, which was in around step four, but I went to step five. Now you know that the wrong answer is usually going to be one of your options. So really make sure that you know what exactly they're asking. And does it make sense, right? If you're answering a question about a height of a person and you say the person is 10 feet tall, well, that's not really a, an actual answer, right? That is probably going to be wrong. So does your answer make sense? And are you following what they are asking? Not being able to tell the difference between letters when they're used as units of measurement versus when they're used in the problem to represent variables is another big mistake. Some students might see 10m written like this and 10m written like this and treat them like they're the same thing. When really typically 10 with the m right next to it like this usually is gonna mean 10 times m. Just like if you saw something like this, 10, x. That would be the same as 10 times x. Now if you see 10m written like this, that's probably going to mean meters. And also keep the context in mind. If the question is discussing distance or something like that, if you see an m, that's probably going to be meters. Treating letters like they're objects is also something that you'll want to avoid. So for example, say that I gave you a question that read backpacks cost b dollars and watches cost w dollars. If I buy four backpacks and five watches, what does 4B plus 5W represent? So some students might look at this and they would just think that the B just stands for backpacks and the W just stands for watches and they would say, well, 4B plus 5W means four backpacks and five watches. When really the B represents the cost of the backpacks and the W is the cost of the watches. So for example, if the watches are $100 each, you would substitute 100 in here for W. And if the backpacks are $30 each, you would put 30 in here for B. Sometimes students get a little confused and they think that there are rules that determine what number a letter stands for. And this is something you'll want to avoid. So for example, some students might look, try to look for secret codes and secret rules. 
So if they got a question like this, 2a plus 14 plus 5b minus 7, they might look at this a and say, well, a is the first letter in the alphabet, so I think I have to put in 1 here for a. And then they'd look at this 5b and they would think, well, you know what, b is the second letter in the alphabet, so I bet I have to put in a 2 here for b. So don't look for secret codes and secret rules like this to determine what a letter stands for because you're just gonna get questions wrong and I don't want that to happen to you. Thinking that letters always have one specific value that they represent is another mistake that you don't wanna do on your test. So for example, the test might tell you for let's say the first question that x equals three. And the mistake would be thinking that x always equals three for every question for the rest of the test. That's a really, really fast way to fail. Thinking that different letters always represent different numbers is something that you don't want to do on your test. So for example, the mistake would be thinking that x plus y and x plus z can't be the same number. So when would this be the case? Well, let's say that y is equal to 2 and z is also equal to 2, then x plus y and x plus z would be the same number. So this definitely can happen, so don't think that a letter is always going to be a different number. So this video's champion shout out goes to a test taker who just passed math and said that my test was mainly geometry and plotting graphs. I skipped the non-calculator section, I hate mental math, mean and median, one or two questions, but the main thing to do is to know how to use your formula sheet. So there's some great advice from a successful test taker. Now, I don't recommend for you to skip the no calculator portion, but here's an example of someone who did and still was successful, so you gotta give credit where credit's due. And I wanted to give a second champion shout out to Emberlin, who just passed the GED reading section, the RLA, and is now preparing for math. And she shared a comment that I really appreciated, so I also wanted to give her a shout out as well. Another mistake would be thinking that letters can only stand for natural numbers. So let's say you got a multiple choice question that said 40 divided by A equals what when A equals 3? Is it A, 13.33 or B, 20? Now, this is, you're probably not going to get something this easy on your test. I'm just using this to illustrate the point that a lot of students would think that B equals 20. They would say, well, 13.33, that's a decimal. That's not a whole number. That's not a natural number. So A can't be the right answer. But actually, A is the right answer. So, so don't be afraid if there's decimals and fractions in your answer choices. Don't think that the answer is always going to be a natural number. Sometimes students get a little confused and they think that operation symbols like addition and subtraction cannot be part of the answer choices. And this can lead them to combining letters and numbers the wrong way. So here's a simple example just to make the point. Simplify 4B plus 2 times 4 minus B. And the answer here is A. But the point I want to make is that some students might look at answer choice A and see that it has a letter in it and think that that can't be the right answer. So don't make this mistake. Forgetting to or just disregarding signs when you're doing operations is another big mistake that you don't want to do on your test. So again, I made up a simple example here that's easier than what you'd see on the test just to make the point here that the way that you would solve this is you would do 2 times 4 and then you're going to do 2 times negative 6b. So a common mistake with this question would be to treat this like a positive and do two times six B and think that B is the correct answer here, but you actually have to take this minus into consideration. So the answer would be A, eight minus 12 B. So just don't forget signs. Even if it's something basic like this, you have, let's say four times negative three. I know it seems simple, but sometimes in the stress of a, a test taking situation, when you're in the heat of the moment, that time's ticking down, Sometimes people make mistakes like this. So just remember, always consider that sign, don't ignore it and don't forget about it. So I've been on YouTube since 2017 making GED test prep videos. And, and in that time, there's one topic that I've gotten more questions in the comments about than any other topic. In fact, people get very angry about this topic. I have no idea why, but that's what I'm about to show you how to be right now. So if I give you a question like this, four equals A squared, and I asked you to tell me what A equals, would you know how to do it? Now keep in mind here, we are using simple numbers here just to make the point that a lot of students, they would see a question like this and they would think, well, the way to get A is I have to do four squared. And they would say, well, four squared is 16, so 16 must equal A. But this is actually incorrect. The way that you have to do this is you have to take the square root of A squared. If I have A squared and I take the square root, I just get A. 
And whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other. So the square root of four is just two. The square root of a squared is just a. So if you encounter a scenario like that on the test, now you know how to do it. It's time now for the champion's challenge. So I'm gonna give you the hardest question, in my opinion, in this video so far, and let's see how you do with it. This is another common mistake that I get a lot of comments about in my videos. And what a lot of people would try to do if I gave them a question like 10 plus X divided by two equals 30. Well, you know what? Let me give you a chance if you'd like to, to pause the video, try to solve this for X, and let's see how this goes for you. Okay, let's talk about this. So a lot, what a lot of people would try to do here is they would say, well, 10 divided by two is five. And then they would say, well, I have now have five plus X equals 30. And they'll try to subtract five from both sides. And they will say, well, X equals 25. That's the right answer, but that's not the right answer. So that's not the correct way to do this question here. So what you want to do, or at least I think the fastest way to do it is actually to multiply both sides by two. And we multiply both sides by two here. And let me rewrite this question. So I would now have 10 plus X equals 60. All right, and now what I can do is I can subtract 10 from both sides of the equation here. And I would find out that the correct answer is X equals 50. So let me back up here. What you could do if you wanted to is if you wanted to divide 10 by two, in this case, you would have to remember that it's still X divided by two because it's not just 10 being divided by two here, it's 10 plus X divided by two. So what you could do is you could say, well, 10 divided by two is five, but you would then also have to leave this as X divided by two equals 30. So if you want to try to divide by two in this scenario, you would have to leave it as five plus X divided by two equals 30. And then you'd proceed to solve this for X. And if you did that, you would get the same exact answer. You would still get, what was it? X equals 50. Um, but just, you can't forget what to do with that too.